Assalamu alaikum, everybody. Uh, it's right at 11 o'clock. Uh, we are going to start shortly. Um, there are people who are still joining. So inshallah, give us about a couple of minutes and then we will start. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum as -salam. Wa alaikum as uh, We are going to be starting shortly. Uh, brothers, so just give us a minute or so. Okay, uh, so inshallah we will start. Um, it's two minutes past 11. Um, Asalaamu Alaikum everybody. Uh, let's start with a short dua. Um, before we get started, a little bit about the housekeeping items. So I would like everybody to pay attention to the housekeeping items uh, because it's important for everybody to be able to pay attention during the session. Um, the first thing is I would like all of you to make sure that your microphones are muted. Um, that way uh, there is no background noise and when Kazanfar is talking, then he's not gonna be interrupted. So uh, thank you everyone for, for making sure that your microphone uh, is on mute. Um, the second thing, um, the format of the session is so that we, um, I'm going to do a quick introduction. I will then turn it over to uh, Ghazanfar. He is going to go through his slides. And then during the presentation, if you have any questions, you are welcome to type your questions in the chat. Um, we will only take questions through the chat, no live questions. Uh, and then, um, Towards the end of the presentation, when, when Razantra is done, we, we are planning to wrap up the presentation in about an hour, 15 minutes, uh, so that we have enough time for the Q&A. So once the presentation is done, I'm going to go through the questions, um, and then um, we will have Razantra answer your questions. So I hope everybody's clear about the rules. Um, I see that uh, some of the people who just joined, they do not have their uh, microphones on mute. So I kindly request everyone to make sure that you are on mute. Okay, so with that said, just a little bit of an introduction about myself. My name is Kashif Saeed. Um, I uh, teach at University of North Texas. Um, I uh, mainly stay at the graduate level. Um, I teach at the College of Business, um, and I'm also the director of their MS in Information Systems and MS in uh, Business Analytics. It's just a little bit about myself. I'm going to be your moderator for the session today. Um, and our guest and our speaker for the session is Vazan um, Farriyaz Sheikh. He is a senior director of application development at VisioNet Systems. Um, so I would like to turn it over to Razanfar and I would request him to do a quick introduction before he uh, gets into his uh, presentation. Razanfar, over to you. Thank you. Um, am I audible and you guys can see my video? Okay. Yes. Perfect. Okay. Yes. Um, so thank you everyone. Uh, thank you all for joining and taking time out 
and um, uh, my name is Vazan Faryaz Sheikh, uh, also known as G uh, by many of my colleagues. And uh, today is our first of many sessions where we will shed some light on uh, career counseling with respect to IT industry. And uh, before we deep dive into the agenda as well as the um, uh, as well as the presentation. I uh, just want to cover like, you know, some bio from my side. Uh, so I'm currently working as a senior director uh, of engineering at Visionet. Um, it's a company uh, that's based out of New Jersey and we basically specialize in software development. And um, I actually graduated back in 06 uh, with my computer engineering degree. And ever since I've been working in IT industry and uh, over the years I've progressed from a software developer uh, to a associate architect, to a enterprise level, um, enterprise level business consultant. So like from that perspective, like, you know, I have um, pretty much a lot of exposure into all stages of, uh, of the execution within the software industry. So uh, that was just a quick intro. Uh, Kashif, do we want to continue or do you have anything else to cover? No, I think it's, um, um... Good to proceed with the presentation. Thank you so much for the intro, Okay. Okay, so here we go. So like uh, what we can be covering today is like, um, uh, like these are the highlights that we're gonna be covering. Um, as in terms of the career counseling part, like uh, time is always of the essence, right? So when it comes to selecting a career, so at the same time, it is very, very vital that, um, uh, that you select a career that resembles who you are, right? And what your personality traits are. So over the years, what I've seen is like, uh, you know, 80% of the people uh, when they're looking to get some kind of uh, intuition uh, for their careers, they basically look toward their surroundings, right? Either they look toward their parents, what they're doing or their cousins or their friends and then they basically absorb that and try to mimic that portion of the mix. But instead, like what, what I encourage everyone is that uh, they should do what they really love and what values uh, that they cherish. So whatever the career that they're selecting, that should be basically associated to what they, what they love to do, what their personality traits are, or what are the value, values that they cherish, right? So this is a lot of effort. Uh, I'm pretty sure like um, uh, when it comes to selecting a career, uh, there are so many different questions. Everyone has um, different thought process in terms of how or what should I select to be successful in life. So we need to identify those kind of things. So we'll inshallah help you guys to uh, evaluate that portion of the mix. And then within the, within the deck today, we're gonna cover a few of the things on that aspect so that it gives you a better understanding of how you should think from a career perspective, how you should assess yourself. And then based out of that, like it will also give you coverage from an understanding on a high level understanding of the profession, like, you know, within the IT industry, how many different careers are there? What are the top careers? What are the salary brackets within that? Um, and then in the next five to 10 years, what is changing? Because like the technology is changing so dramatically it's not like medical field or any other field where we would basically go in and then uh, do and come out as the doctors. But like when we go in into technology, uh, after five years, the technology changes a lot. So we need to be very, very cognizant of that fact and then think about those various kind of things to develop our concepts. And uh, with that in mind, like I will shed some light on what are the various different IT degrees, what would actually work for you um, to uh, achieve your career goals and objectives, and then what it is gonna cost you on an average. So all that kind of information, we have tried our level best to incorporate uh, into this session. However, like uh, of course, there, if there are any additional questions that you may have, uh, we would be able to um, cover those up at the end of the session. And if in case there are some questions to which we don't have uh, specific answers on, then we'll definitely take those offline, work on them, and then publish them later on, on uh, the channel as well. So with that in mind, like um, uh, that was basically the agenda uh, for our meeting today. And then from, from that point onwards, uh, what I would like to do is to move on to the next slide. So uh, this slide is very, very critical, very important 
um, I didn't want it when I started uh, to think about like, you know, how should I start my presentation or what should be the thing that I should introduce first was like not to introduce IT or IT industry, but to focus on uh, what career choices and how to make those career choices, right? That is very, very important. Uh, it doesn't matter what stage you are at. It doesn't matter like how, uh, at what level you are at. The sooner you put your mind to it, the easier it would be to build a career for you uh, that you really want, right? Uh, because what I've seen is like um, the the ages is, is like uh, from an age perspective, um, kids should start start looking into their career path um, at a lot younger age than what people think, right? Uh, most studies, what I've seen is like uh, they show that you know the perfect age for anyone to start thinking about their career is about five or six, uh, right? And uh, what most experts are in the industry that they say like, you know, the kid should start looking ahead uh, for their future jobs or their future ventures that they wanna get into, right? And uh, from a research perspective, like uh, most of the people nowadays, like of course, like uh, everything is so technology uh, based that the researchers are saying that, you know, parents, uh, when they do some surveys and then they look into how things are evolving, they always say like, you know, com computer literacy is a top skill that their child should absolutely learn when they're er uh, in the early stages, right? And also like um, it would be starting a new career absolutely is not easy at all. Like there's so many different questions. There's so many different variations. Uh, you go through your educational, um, educational path and then on to learning skill sets. So those are the kind of things that uh, are very, very important that you should be cognizant of. And then when you're starting a new career, um, you should have your final destination in mind, right? This would actually help you to deal with all the hurdles that are gonna come into your path. And then you would be able to uh, you know, make assessment, take, uh, make the judgment, take decisions, and then uh, it would help you to have very clear goals in your mind where, you know, so questions would be like uh, that, uh, I want to build a career as what, right? That's a major question. So that would depend on what kind of uh, interest you have, what kind of self-assessment you have done, what kind of um, uh, courses that you have done in the, in the past. And then like another question comes down to the mind that, you know, what I want to work with a established company. Some people would say, okay, you know what? I want to work for Google. I want to work for Amazon. I want to work for uh, the fan companies that are out there, which are technology-based companies. Some would say, I want to invent something, right? So those are the kind of things that I would say, like they're very important. And then for those, like there are certain assessments that you can take online. And now within this era, like uh, the, uh, the personality trait is also important, right? So you need to understand what personality traits are, what kind of personality are you? You need to, you need to understand that very, very important. And with that in mind, like uh, what I've done is like I've gathered few of the links uh, that are here. Uh, it's not just for the, uh, for the person who is basically looking into what career should I choose. It's also for their parents or their guardians who are working with them to select the, right, um, uh, select the right career for their child, right? So you can go over this link. So if you click on that, um, it would actually take you to, uh, to the website and then you can scroll through all this. I'm just gonna skim through all this and then it's gonna tell you like, you know, what are the, what are the important things that you need to keep in mind when you are selecting any of the, uh, any of the careers. And with that in mind, uh, there are uh, this self-assessment uh, link is very critical because that would actually help you to make a lot, take a lot of assessment tests, and that would get a kind of give you a aptitude result. Like you know, what uh, what are the areas that you're good in? What are the areas like you know, from your personal style perspective, what would actually work for you? So before you jump on to hey, this is the career that I want to do. I would definitely recommend you all to take this, uh, take these a uh, few tests. And then there are so many different free tests available. Like, you know, like this career test is something that is very graphical. Like if you click on that, it would show you a few graphics. You would basically uh, interact with those graphics. And then based out of that, like uh, 
it would make an assessment and then at the end of the at the end of the uh, quiz it would actually tell you that these are the choices that you may be um, able to excel more than other other professions right and on the flip side like it also has a lot of uh, a, a lot of path source so that would actually tell you like you know what kind of uh, solutions or what kind of uh, education path that you need to follow in order to achieve a specific uh, profession so that that would actually help you a lot and what i say is like you know this uh, Maya breaks model that is something that uh, i always and always uh, tell everyone to basically make an assessment on because that tells you what kind of personality you are right and then uh, based off you, if you know what kind of personality you are, then you would know what kind of uh, values do you cherish. And then in terms of what kind of personal energy do you have to put into those uh, different aspects. So with that in mind, like uh, that is very, very critical. So uh, please go over all these links. Um, those are gonna be inshallah available within the deck. And then once we are done with the presentation, we'll share the link out to you so that you can make those assessments as well. Okay, so with that, I'll move on to um, to the next line. So uh, next slide. But before I end that, like, uh, just want to re-emphasize on, like, you know, uh, even though, like, you know, you guys have uh, included yourself for an IT industry uh, career counseling session, but also may uh, please go go on these links and then make sure that you basically find out what the assessment would actually tell you. You might be surprised on you know what what kind of uh, personal style you have or what kind of uh, uh, empowerment uh, would come in within within these personas as well. Okay. Now, uh, when it comes to the IT profession, uh, over the years, what I have seen and gathered uh, and learned is like uh, there are two type of uh, uh, like I can categorize the skill set into two different tangents. Uh, one is basically the soft skills, uh, which is of course like, you know, it, it needs to be there for almost every profession. And then the other one is basically the hard skill uh, where you basically develop like the subject matter expertise, right? So within, within the IT industry, like what I've seen is like uh, people who are very, very logical mindset, uh, have a very logical mindset and then, you know, love maths or stats or pretty good at it, right? So those are the traits that you would quickly identify and that would tell you that, okay, you know what, if I'm pretty good at math and stats or calculus, or I understand logic or how I understand the engineering concepts, that would actually help you out a lot in IT uh, because like there's so many different variations where you would basically have to put your cap on from a, uh, from a logical mindset perspective and then think about the problem, how to solve that problem what are the issues causing that problem? What are, uh, how, uh, how is that gonna impact the end user? How am I gonna solve those? So, so all those traits are gonna come in into the play. And those are the things that you would basically learn inshallah with time. It's not like, you know, you would learn everything at once, but those are the things that you need to be focused on in order to be very, very successful in an IT career, right? And then from a soft skill perspective, that is very, very important as well. No doubt about it. Uh, because like collaboration and skill to have that collaboration uh, is very critical. Uh, there might be, I've seen like people uh, in my experience, I've seen people who are very extraordinarily uh, talented. Um, and, but however, they cannot communicate. They're, they're, uh, they're, they lack in some kind of a communication part where they basically, you know, are left out from the others. So in that way, like uh, that is also a critical thing that you would be able to, if you have an idea in mind, then you should be able to communicate that idea to others and then also bring everyone to the same page. That is also very, very critical skill. I would say that, um, that you would need uh, within an IT career. And then of course, like uh, troubleshooting, solving puzzles, uh, critical thinking is also another thing. And then collaboration and resilience between the team is also another thing that you would need to uh, understand. And I always say like, you know, over the years, what I've seen is empathy is something that uh, you need to develop and you, you probably would have to be very, very emotionally intelligent in order to be successful in an IT career. So uh, all, with all those things in mind, 
uh, if you have like you know some some charismatic technology that comes in and then you're me mesmerized by that technology that hey um, look at this iPhone uh, it has so many different features it can do this or that or versus Galaxy it provides so many more uh, feature sets than uh, what iPhone is presenting or what Apple is presenting so those are the kind of things that you know if those are the things that kind of uh, uh, create passion within you then definitely IT is a career for you guys. So that having said that, like uh, be focused on those qualities. Uh, of course, like you're not gonna have those things day one, but like uh, try to understand what those things are, try to advance yourself by um, going into uh, doing some research, going online, reading about these kind of qualities, reading about like uh, what are the, what are the different aspects that I can work on and then definitely that is going to help you out a lot uh, with, with that in mind. Okay. So uh, next, uh, what I would like to do is to give you an insight into a uh, different career paths within IT industry. Like uh, as of now, like uh, there are about like 200 plus professions within IT. Um, and then within, even within an organization, almost like 50, 60 plus uh, different professions are being, um, are being worked upon within any given organization, right? When it comes to YD. Uh, but like uh, what we have done is like, you know, we have categorized that into a less, uh, a smaller bucket so that you kind of understand the pathway of uh, when a career starts, how a career starts, and then within IT, what are the different tangents uh, of those of those uh, categories, and then within that, like what we have done is like we have covered uh, software development, we have covered mobile and web development, uh, we have covered like uh, information systems where you would have uh, data and storage databases and all that kind of stuff. And then there are nuances which have come into the into the industry where a lot of uh, cloud-based technology is being uh, is being developed and worked upon and so that like, you know, that is a different tangent now. So we basically divide that up as a separate uh, initiative other than the network technology. And then of course there are other uh, back, back office operations uh, where IT is pretty big on and then support. So information security, service and infrastructure and IT and strategy management. So those are the different aspects that we will be covering. And then if you can see like all these I don't know if you can see it uh, in, but let me pull that up uh, in a more, um, I think it should be better for you guys to see this one. Okay, so uh, from an early career perspective, like uh, uh, we'll cover uh, one by one, but like, uh, let me start with software development. So like um, uh, with software development in mind, like any, uh, any junior development who has a background in developing um, any of the frameworks or any has worked on any languages. Uh, what we have seen is like, uh, you know, from one to two year experience, um, they would probably land up between 45 to 70 K. That's an average uh, for the whole US. Uh, but I wouldn't say like, you know, this is an average for Dallas or Texas or any specific state, right? If you're in East Coast or West Coast, it's, it's absolutely gonna be more. Uh, but depending on like, this is just an average to give you an idea of, uh, how many years uh, of career that you have versus how much uh, would they be making on an average. And this does not include any bonuses because like most of the company nowadays also offer bonuses. So bonuses can be like, uh, you know, two times or three times of whatever you are making throughout the year. So those are specific things that are, uh, are very, very dependent on what organizations that you work with but most of the technology companies are basically going towards that route where they're offering bonuses as well. Um, with that in mind, like any software uh, uh, software developer would basically start their career. And then within, within like, you know, they would spend five to six years um, and then they would basically get onto a, a level of about like 100 to 110 K. And then with that in mind, like, you know, the mid career is basically from eight to eight to 14, 15 years. But like uh, from that point onward, that is basically like, you know, a very, very season, senior and seasoned resource who is basically working throughout these years. So anyone who has about like 20 years of, um, of experience as a veteran within the industry, because they have seen 
um, so many different variations. They might have seen like, uh, you know, tapes uh, that were the magnetic tapes that were there to store data. And now they might be seeing like cloud-based solutions. So uh, they would have the complete breadth of from what it was back then from what it is now, right? So with that in mind, like um, that, that's a path that uh, they they might take. Some um, some of the developers might go into management and then kind of manage uh, projects, programs, and portfolios, just like what I'm doing right now. Um, I'm actually uh, I have about like uh, 15 years of experience, and with that in mind, like you know, I'm actually um, spearheading a complete portfolio uh, from a product perspective. And within that, like uh, there are so many different technologies that are being used. So I actually work through those technologies and then make evaluation what would work best with what we have right now and what are the customer needs and objectives. So based out of that, like uh, we work with the uh, different architects, we work with different um, uh, developers, software engineers, and we basically process through that part. So with that in mind, like uh, that, that was the case for um, the software engineers where they would basically excel and then either go into the management side or if they still want to be on a technical side, then they would basically go towards the architecture side. Um, and then they would basically do application architecture. They would then do enterprise architecture and then they would actually do a complete portfolio architecture as well, right? Now, uh, web and mobile uh, is mostly pertaining to uh, like websites. Now, like uh, there's so many different uh, technologies that are also being uh, used in the website. And then every second, every like uh, every minute, about like uh, uh, about like a hundred of hundreds of uh, websites are being launched, right? So that would actually give you a breath of uh, how much uh, industry is evolving. So like I was actually reading a survey which, uh, which, uh, which, uh, which was suggesting that uh, by 2025, it, there would be a 1.3 million IT user, IT uh, application um, technicians as well as like uh, software engineers that would be needed. But like uh, that, had, that number I'm pretty sure is gonna double because, uh, or maybe three times that number because, uh, because of this, this pandemic part, um, what I've seen is like companies who had plans for um, implementing their digital strategies for the next five years, they basically reduce it down to one year and then they wanna start implementing each and everything and take everything online and then be virtual and be competitive. So I'm pretty sure like uh, the need for the, uh, for the professionals uh, within the IT industry is gonna increase tremendously and it's gonna be a tenfold increase at least. Um, and then with that in mind, like uh, there are other tangents, like for example, like storage and data, uh, those are mostly related to information systems. Uh, Brother Kashifair is an expert on that as well. And inshallah in future, we'll be looking into more sessions uh, to cover those kind of things in detail. And then Epic also have few, um, a few programs that they have lined up on their website where you can take and understand those kind of uh, concepts as well as uh, understand what what the information systems are, what kind of uh, what kind of professions can I build from from that point onwards as well. So that would give you an insight into that aspect. It would miss, mainly like uh, you know database administrators are uh, within that persona. Data analysts are within that persona where they would basically work with data. They would store that data um, on on multiple um, storage uh, platforms. Uh, which may include databases, which may include uh, just the storage space for storing content. So, and then working with network technology like uh, cloud-based technologies like AWS or Azure. Um, so those include that portion of the mix. And then from a DevOps perspective, that is something fairly new. Um, most of the things, uh, what like DevOps and cloud technology, like let me shed some light on that and that kind of give you an insight into what that is. So from a DevOps perspective, like um, mostly when you, uh, when you write a code, a piece of code, and then you merge that into the, uh, the, the code that was already there, that is something that was done previously by the developer on its own, right? They were using that, they were deploying it and they were deploying it onto the servers. And then from a, uh, from a perspective of uh, going into production, they were doing all, all in all, right? Now those roles, uh, now uh, the responsibilities have been divided up and then DevOps is mostly related to how you basically 
control your repositories, how you basically have pipelines that would actually build um, build the uh, the code on its own and then deploy that into, into production. So those are the areas where you would basically be setting up all those pipelines, all the GitHub, where you basically, the repositories where you keep your code. That is something that the DevOps team is very, very uh, keen on doing. And then they basically bring a lot of, uh, a lot of different best practices into the mix so that we can, uh, we can have the code base in a, in a united manner as well as in a repository. And then they are the custodians of that part. So that's basically what the DevOps uh, team is responsible for. To start with, like, you know, you'll have the cloud support engineer where they would basically start by just uh, looking through the pipelines, creating those, and then deploying the code. However, like uh, as you progress throughout the career, you would basically bring in automation into the mix where you would have a lot of uh, different pipelines created. And then those are gonna be pushing the code into production. So like, just like I'll give you an example of uh, Amazon, uh, where like, uh, you know, it, it usually took about like uh, weeks of planning to deploy a code into production, right? And then uh, usually companies were doing just one deployment into production in a year or maybe in six months or maybe in a quarter, right? Now uh, with, uh, with the technology that we have at hand and then all these pipelines that we can manage and repositories that we can manage, those are being done like multiple times in a day. So any, any given day um, at Amazon, like uh, there are about like almost about like uh, 20 to 30 deployments done on a specific product per day. And it is so seamless that no one, uh, no one knows like, you know, if things are being changed or there is no downtime to it. So that is very, very, I would say like, you know, for me, it is very uh, captivating. And I always look towards the DevOps and cloud technology. And that's one of my favorite areas uh, that I want to focus on. So it's up to you guys to explore that uh, portion of the mix. Uh, that is something very big at this point in time. Uh, and for the next, uh, I would say 10 years, this is still going to be a very, very strong area that you should be focused on. Um, from a networking perspective, network is another uh, tangent, uh, which is growing a lot um, as we are seeing uh, the cloud implementation more and more. Uh, there are data centers across the globe that are being set up, and uh, with just in um, just within Texas, like you know, there are four new data centers that are being opened up by Facebook, Amazon, as well as Oracle. So, like uh, they're all doing that, and now I just heard that HP is also moving uh, into Texas, so they are going to have a lot of data centers built out as well. So, with that in mind, like um, um, these network engineers are very critical. They basically work on a lot of uh, router-based technologies. They work on uh, work and mostly with companies like Cisco, uh, Hawaii, and all those kind of things. And then they are not just limited to computer networks. They're also uh, working on technologies that are related to all these 5G, 6G uh, technologies for cell phone or internet-based uh, companies as well, right? So those are also flourishing a lot, um, but like each, each um, I would say profession has their pros and cons. So do some research on that part, uh, see how the progression is, but like from a perspective of like a, on an average, you would also be able to see like, you know, from, an, uh, from a career perspective, if you're starting up as a software developer versus a uh, network engineer, then what is the pay scale? What is the what is the what are the requirements for that particular technical career? And you would be able to make a, a better assessment of what your goals and objectives are, and how is that aligned to your goals and objectives, right? Um, with that in mind, like another uh, big uh, thing that uh, nowadays everyone is very very keen on is cybersecurity. Uh, uh, before, like you know, it was just like uh, okay. I just enter my username, password, and be done with it. But now it is more secure. Now you see like two-factor authentications where you would basically get to know your username, password, as well as you would basically get a text message on your cell phone or your email to basically verify that that was the same person that basically is trying to log in, right? So those are the kind of things that are basically covered within the cyber uh, cyber security. How secure can we make um, the environment? So that like no hackers can come in and then kind of uh, put down malwares or um, can hack the system down, right? 
So with that in mind, like there's so many different variations, like uh, even um, uh, in, within the information security, now you can even do PhD uh, degrees. And um, a lot of people are actually going toward that portion because like most of the technologies are now uh, going online and they are available all the websites all the all the uh, even like uh, i would say the money transfers and all that kind of stuff payment gateways there's so many different things out there uh, and then nowadays like uh, you have so much that you work online rather than doing at home right uh, i don't remember the last time i went to my bank to withdraw money or to uh, to uh, deposit anything it's all done online so we would have to make all that infrastructure secure, right? And who is the custodian of that part? Those are basically the security guys or the security analysts or the security engineers who would basically be working on that portion of the mix and uh, implement the best practices or implement the protocols or uh, that would ensure that, the, uh, that the, uh, the environments are secure, the websites are secure, and then your personal information is being stored in a very, very, uh, secured manner. So those are the kind of things that are basically covered uh, within the information security perspective. Uh, from a service and in infrastructure perspective, I would say uh, those are something that are uh, more related or uh, more related to data centers as well as like um, um, help desk centers uh, that we have across multiple organizations. So for example, like, you know, if you're calling up any, any, if you're calling up Chase Bank, right? So there would be a telephony um, software system that would actually engage you and then you would basically press few dials and buttons and then that would actually navigate to what you need, right? And then there are some automated AI based and machine learning based systems that are also included into the mix. So those are the kind of uh, things that are basically covered within, within this persona. And then with that in mind, like there's so many different variations and then uh, so many different things within within the health center. So for example, like uh, the calling uh, software, the calling networks, the calling um, uh, gateways that basically connect you. So for example, let me give you an example of, um, of, one, of, the, uh, of one of the software systems that we were building up. So like uh, uh, one of the customers reached out to us, they had a pretty massive call center and then the disconnect was like whenever whenever somebody was calling in from a specific number that they were associated with, they were not getting their information, and they it was taking them tons of time to basically evaluate like okay, you know who is this person, what his needs are, what was the last correspondence that we did with this particular person. So we basically developed a, a solution for that part where uh, we basically interact integrated the telephony system. Um, to a CRM system, which is a customer relationship management system. And then based out of that, like what we did was like whenever somebody was calling in into, into their call center with the number that they were registered with, then it would automatically pull up all the information about that customer and also would bring up the last conversations or, or any order history or return history, right? So that really created an immersive experience for the customer so that like, you know, if you're calling in uh, and then looking into like, hey, um, I'm calling to check on this and the other person reply, okay, Mr. Sheikh, I, I do understand uh, last time we had a call on this particular date and we were discussing about this and this is the update on your order. That would actually create a lot more connectivity between, between them as well, right? So with that in mind, like um, those are the kind of things that uh, would come into that persona. And there's so many exciting things that you can do within all these different tangents, but you have to explore about that part. And then of course, this one session is not enough to basically indulge you with all the different uh, things or all the different pros and cons within each and every um, category that we have here but like that would at least give you an insight into where to start from, right? So at least you'll hit the ground running rather than um, just doing research from a ground level up. And um, last thing is like, you know, all these progression, once you go towards that part, like they are the person who basically become like uh, the CIOs. They are the one who basically become like the architects. They are the ones who basically become um, the, the most technology leaders in the world, right? So, so that, that's basically the crux of it. Um, just want to leave at that point. And then of course, like, uh, there are 
certain other things that I would like to cover. There are a few other professions um, other than this. So let me quickly pull that up. Okay. Um, so in terms of the technology, like uh, uh, most of the people, it's not just writing code uh, or not just um, hardwiring the network cables or the routers or configuring those routers is also a few other people who ensure quality as well, right? Or who would basically are the li liaison between the business users as well as the IT professional or the programmers or the software engineers, right? So like within, within anything or any initiative, uh, there comes a business analyst and then a technical analyst, right? So they, these are different tangents that you can also look into. Uh, these are different careers that are booming a lot at this point in time. And then within that, like uh, if you can see like all these, um, all these uh, analysts, they, what they do is like, they basically get the, um, get the understanding of what the business current challenges are. And then based out of that, they basically propose, they work with the, with the software developers or the architects or the technology team to basically develop a solution that would actually help to mitigate all the challenges and then bring in efficiencies. So those are very, very vital roles. Uh, and then uh, from a perspective, how they are basically growing is also very important. So some uh, BAs or business analysts would actually grow into uh, enterprise business analysts and then uh, basically take that particular thing. And then uh, they would basically go toward the customer experience, um, uh, customer experience officer role as well, right? So that, because they would know the understanding of what the business is, what the core of that business is, what are the challenges, how we can tackle those through the technology side. So they that would basically help them to be on, on the customer experience side, right? And then from a, of course, like there are, whenever there are projects, programs or portfolio, there's always gonna be someone who is gonna be coordinating on all that, who's gonna be defining what needs to get done when, um, who's gonna do that, what resources are available, uh, how, much, how much budget do we have to get this thing done? Are we on budget or not? Are we, are we taking the right steps towards uh, what we need to achieve? Are we, um, are we basically aligned to the objectives of the initiative? So those are the kind of things that uh, few people think about and those are the people who are called like uh, project managers, project coordinators, program manager, portfolio managers, or strategists, right? So those are the things that are very, very critical for any given program. If you wanna excel into that, if you think you're good at uh, keeping tabs at uh, the to-do list or keeping a vision of, uh, of, of um, uh, aligning objective to your vision, then that is basically a area that you should excel in, you should look into, uh, you should promote yourself into it, look into different courses, and then we uh, move on to those positions, right? And uh, in terms of the QA, that's also another very, very important um, uh, industry uh, or profession within, within IT industry, uh, because like um, if something is developed, who would validate that, uh, you know, uh, if that is what was based out of what the initial requirements are, right? So like people would validate that, okay, you know, it is working fine. Now they would basically verify if that particular thing is working, that is great. But if it's working as it was needed or it is working in a different way, right? So those are the kind of things that are, uh, that the QA people who are very, very curious, I would say like what I've seen over the years, like uh, people who are very curious about how things are working, um, how we can break those things down, what are the different components within that, are all components held together or not? Those are the things that would basically come up with as a quality assurance engineer, right? And uh, there are, of course, like um, there are different tangents that go out from that aspect as well. I've seen like uh, people moving into automation where they write a lot of code to automate all those test scripts, right? So some, uh, if somebody is testing a system and then they would like to know, like how can I automate that? Or how can I see like if I am logging in into a website and it is taking two seconds to load one page, how much time would it take to uh, for 1000 users to, uh, if they're accessing this website, then how much would be the load time, right? So with that in mind, like uh, there are some automation frameworks and uh, programming that the quality assurance engineers also do as well. 
So it's not just like, you know, a manual thing that where they just write it up and then manually test that. They basically progress their profession and their uh, career to an automation level where they be, can basically become RP experts, um, which is like a, the a robotic processing automation. Uh, that is also a tangent that they basically grow in a lot, right? So uh, with that in mind, like I, I just quickly uh, pulled up information from the website uh, that kind of give you an insight into uh, what the top 10 IT careers are. And uh, like this would basically give you an insight into what kind of, uh, uh, what are data scientists you can, um, data scientists are basically data analysts who basically analyze the data and then come up with multiple models. Uh, so for example, like, let me give you an example of that. Like um, I, I have a data scientist in my company who basically evaluates the current, uh, so what he's doing right now, he's currently evaluating uh, the pandemic situation as well as the impact on different regions, as well as people, and then coming up with an analytical model that kind of depicts that, uh, okay, within future, in the next six months, what's gonna happen, right? So that is something that is very, very, um, uh, I'm very curious about. And then that is very uh, exciting uh, area. And then he's a PhD in data, uh, data sciences as well. So like um, I get to learn a lot uh, from him so I would, I would definitely see, like you know, uh, would uh, would ask you guys to explore that and understand that uh, as well. And in terms of, of course, like there are other areas where you would be able to uh, look into. But like from a uh, software engineering perspective, uh, from a programming perspective, from a uh, DevOps perspective, those are the areas that I have. Uh, the, those are the areas that are very, very high in demand at this point in time. And this might change in the next five years or so, but like at least to start looking into that, like that would actually give you more insight into what is upcoming in the next um, uh, next 10 years, right? So in that way, you can plan for that part and then you can plan for your career progression as well. Uh, there are a few more uh, links here. Like um, I have added like a top um, career that would actually give you like, you know, what, what, uh, what kind of job uh, in IT is, uh, what is the growth, what is the volume, and what is the average salary as well. And then also like, you know, growth factors in terms of well, what should be the expectations when you go into that particular uh, career, right? So what you should be doing, software engineers, video game, video gaming is a lot uh, right now. Like people have made a um, career out of playing video games, right? So those are like people who are basically kind of a QA of that particular, of that particular system. So they're basically, uh, making sure that all the quality uh, is there, all the uh, all the functionality is working as expected, and things like that as well, right? And then there are other portion of the mix where they're basically doing gaming as as professional gamers who basically compete into competitions as well. So that has also become a profession at this point in time. Okay. Uh, next, uh, this is a very, very important link uh, that uh, I would like everyone to basically go on to. Uh, this is a survey done by Stack Overflow of, um, so Stack Overflow, what Stack Overflow is, it's, it's a website that was constructed like uh, 15, 20 years ago. Uh, when, I, when I initially started my career, like if I had any questions in terms of like, hey, I'm having issues compiling my code, I'm having issues writing a new uh, script or any of that sort, I would always get my answers either through um, Stack Overflow or through Google, right? So that is the one number one website that I always recommend to each and every person who is making a career out in IT, right? Uh, especially in software development programming. Um, so with that in mind, like uh, this survey kind of uh, uh, gives you an insight into, you know, what, so they conduct every year they conduct a survey and with this like you would find like 2019 2015 16 17 18 19 20 you can basically go through start with 2020 um, move on to 2019 and then you know go backwards that would actually give you an insight into how that how the industry is evolving how things are changing how people are uh, what people are working on what technology how people are uh, what kind of profiles are there within that persona, what kind of work are they doing? So that would actually give you a lot more clarity into what to expect within within the software engineering side. 
So with that in mind, like uh, they conducted a survey with about like 65,000 individuals, right? And then uh, with that, like, you know, it has all, all the detail and the survey also tells you like, you know, where did the participants participated from? Um, what kind of uh, uh, developer roles uh, that they participated? So mostly if you can see, like uh, they were all backend, uh, backend developers who are basically working on the server level um, server level scripting or programming. And then uh, most, of the, uh, most of the people about like, almost like uh, uh, 50 to 55% of the people are full stack, which means that uh, they're working on uh, front end technologies that are basically on your web pages or web browsers, right? So maybe JavaScripting or Node or React or Vue or whatsoever is the technology that they're using. And that kind of gives you a uh, deep insight into what kind of uh, professionals they are. So this kind of tells you like, you know, it also gives you an insight into what are the professions that are uh, that are being worked upon or heavily invested into right now, right? Um, next, uh, this tells you like, you know, uh, if they're doing coding, uh, if they started coding as a hobby or uh, from an experience perspective, um, how much experience that each person has who basically conducted this and then how many professional years have they uh, have they have have they, do they have under their belt uh, one important thing that i wanted to show you was like uh, uh, this tells you like uh, yeah so this is the most important thing like you can see like writing that first line of code when did you wrote your first line of code right that gives your perspective of like uh, just see that 14 to 15 years so it was it. So right now, if somebody is basically taking a survey and is telling, like you know, I was fourteen to fifteen years when I wrote my first uh, first line of code, that really tells you, like you know, how how soon that you should start on these kind of things, right? Uh, and if you are um, very much indulged into software engineering side, or if you're uh, pretty good, if you if you think that you know. Uh, you like programming, then start now that this is the time to start. Where, whether you are in um, middle school, you're in high school, or you're in already in another profession and want to switch, even then uh, you should start from somewhere. So, so that would actually give you an insight. And then also it would also tell you like, you know, from an educational uh, perspective, like uh, what are uh, the other people doing in the industry as well, okay? So please do go over this. It's very, very interesting. Uh, it would tell you, you know, like a uh, formal educational importance, how important it is. It was very, very, uh, you know, eye-opening for me, to be very honest, when I saw the responses on that. And it would also give you more insight into what others are doing, what um, what countries that they conducted the, um, conducted the session on. And then this would also give you a perspective of what kind of developers. So for example, like backend frontend developers were more than 25,000 people who responded to this survey. And then uh, based out of all these, like, you know, it would give you a crux of like uh, what the numbers are and how they're using the technology, right? Okay, so with all that in mind, like, of course, like uh, there are always uh, some pros and cons for each and every profession, right? Um, so with, with, with IT uh, career in mind, I would say like uh, uh, there is a lot of uh, constant industry growth, as you can see, like, you know, I've just uh, told you guys that, uh, you know, by 2025, uh, it's gonna be tenfold numbers that were needed at this point in time, right? Um, pay wise, it's pretty, pretty, pretty good pay. Uh, from a job perspective, it is like, I would say like uh, the, the reliability is there. Um, and then there's so many different variations uh, within the industry. And the career growth is very, very much available here uh, because there's always need for uh, always need for IT professionals. And then from a perspective of a college degree, like it is way less expensive than I would say than uh, being a doctor or uh, being a lawyer or spending that kind of money into it as well, right? So those are the basically pros uh, of the industry. Of course, um, you know, like uh, industry comes with uh, some some uh, difficult things as well. It's not like, you know, uh, everything is picture perfect. Uh, but like from a cons perspective, I would say like um, uh, the two main derivatives in, in spe to specialize in. Uh, from a technology perspective, like every 18 months, like uh, there's a new technology uh, infrastructure 
uh, framework, uh, languages that are coming up, right? And as we are progressing, it's even uh, it's even more and more and more, right? Um, I when I started my career, it was just C uh, C plus plus or C um, ASP dot net or something on that note, right? Or Java. Now there's so many different variations of that part. There's so many different variations of uh, cloud-based technology. There's so many different variations of uh, um, ERP solutions. So things like that are uh, constantly, you know, learning curve is always there. That is basically what I would say. And then of course, like uh, uh, all these IT uh, individuals, uh, they don't have a specific time to work in. Like, you know, nine to five is not a job. Uh, it's like 24 seven. So you might be called upon depending on, you know, what kind of role you are in, uh, what kind of uh, organization that you work with. Uh, there's always gonna be a constant pressure to deliver um, within a short period of time, as well as like, you know, if anything is messed up, then you are the person who would basically uh, work on that part, right? So, and also like, you know, sometimes um, I've also learned one more thing is that, um, uh, it's pretty hard to explain what you do, to be very honest, when you're in IT. Uh, some, um, um, I'll, I'll just relate one thing. So like uh, my uncle, uh, when I was doing my graduation, I started my career, I started, just started my career, uh, he had a computer. He said like, hey, my computer uh, power supply is out, like it's not working. You're a computer engineer, right? Like, why don't you fix it? So, so I was trying to explain like, hey, I do understand like how the power supply works. Uh, what kind of circuit it has, what kind of things it has, but like I'm not the right person to basically pull that out. Yes, if you are, if you're asking about like, hey, I need, I need a website that can do this, 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 and or a system that can perform functionally like this. Yes, that I can build, but like for that part, I would, exp I have to explore more, and then I'm not the best person to work on that part, right? So things of that nature like uh, come along and then um, you have to, you know, just bear with that. Um, next thing uh, is uh, certain different uh, IT degrees uh, within, within the IT profession. So for example, like um, there are um, associate degrees that are being offered as well as like uh, their doctorate PhD level degrees within IT industry. Um, and every, every different, like there are about like, I think there are almost 125 different, um, different areas where you can, you can do PhD in, in an IT, uh, in an IT profession. So like, uh, th those are the number of levels of, uh, doctor degrees that are out there. Um, so which is very, very, very interesting. And in terms of like certification, like there are thousands and thousands of certifications out there um for each and every uh, different profession within it and then of course like uh, once you reach to a level you get accreditations as well as all those kind of stuff but from a perspective of um, the college tuition fee or whatsoever what i've seen so far is like for a, a public four-year degree either you're in state or out of state that would be in a range of about like 85 to 100 uh, dollars uh, that would include like the boardrooms, uh, the content, uh, uh, any certification or any of that sort that uh, would be needed for that part. That's all inclusive of that. And then if you're, you know, going into a private college like Rice University or any other university that is private, then you might be spending about 150 to $200,000 on that part, right? So with that in mind, like, you know, the, whenever the number uh, people see, they, they always like, you know, the number of questions that I always get is like, uh, should I even get a formal degree, right? Because like, if you are, if you're working as a, uh, if you're working as an IT uh, specialist, and then you're working as a programmer, then you just have to learn a few courses and be done with it. And then interestingly, like, you know, some of, um, some of the top-notch companies like uh, Tesla, Google, Apple, IBM, now uh, they're basically, uh, you know, like uh, bringing down their requirements in terms of the degree and be more focused on uh, hands-on experience and practical people who are basically working on technologies and uh, programming, right? So, so with that in mind, like, you know, as an experienced IT professional, um, my advice is always get a degree. Uh, what I, what I say is like, you know, employers like people who are generally educated and, uh, within those fast paced organization, um, as you can see now, like it is too much fast paced. And even after COVID, like, uh, think they want to 
get the things done fairly quickly so like uh, anyone who who doesn't know much about like the concept who doesn't have the mindset of a of a software engineer or a uh, or a analyst then they don't really um, get them on board to put some time on them rather they would basically get people who are generally educated or who are uh, generally work in that particular pr proportion and then be done with it right so what i would say is like you know even if you have uh, options possibly of completing like four year uh, computer sciences degree or engineering degree or math degree uh, do that like it's not like you know you have to you have to get the computer sciences degree done in order to land a good job um, at any of the fan company it's not necessarily but if you do that formal degree then you will learn the discipline and then uh, your mind will get used to the collaboration part right you will be uh, you will think about it from a task orientation perspective you will basically be working with great minds you will be um, assigned to all kind of different tools and variations of different programming language throughout your four year degree programs, right? So that would actually help you to elevate yourself and to build that mindset um, that that everybody calls in an, uh, an engineering mindset, right? So like um, they always say, okay, you know what, like um, uh, um, one more question that everyone asks me is like, you know, what's the what's the difference between uh, a programmer and a software engineer, right? So I, will, I always tell them that, you know, from a, from a programming perspective, everyone can do the programming. It is just writing, you know, some functional code to make sure that uh, whatever need that, that are certified, right? But if you are a software engineer, you would basically design the core thinking about the problem itself. So by the mindset, what I mean is like, uh, you would basically consider uh, end users, you would consider business need, you would consider frameworks, you would consider your experience, you would consider different languages or different uh, technologies that we should basically put that into or how we can effectively and efficiently solve that problem, right? So that is something that is getting an IT degree is I, I definitely think is worth it. Um, it gives you breadth of knowledge and then also insight into these engineering decisions. And then also in terms of an IT degree, it would give you an edge over others because uh, at this point in time, like, you know, um, big organization, all the Fortune 500 companies, they basically require not just a bachelor degree, but also a master's degree at this point in time. Things might change in the next uh, five to 10 years as we are progressing because there's so dramatically uh, things that are evolving and changing. We don't know about like the next uh, maybe 10 years, but what I, at this point in time for the next five years, what I would really emphasize on is to get a degree um, and then work through your progression from that aspect. And not just a degree, but also to learn about the career that you wanna evolve in, right? Um, one thing that I wanted to show you was basically, um, uh, this is another slide that I wanted to show you guys. Um, this kind of give you a perspective. This is basically from the same survey uh, from Stack Overflow, uh, which kind of gave you, uh, which would actually give you insight into, you know, how many, how many of those 65,000 people who responded, uh, what kind of level of, uh, uh, level of uh, formal degrees do they have, right? So that would actually give you insight. As you can see, like, you know, most of the, most of the people are uh, about like 52% of the people have about like a computer science, computer engineering or software engineering degrees uh, within, within, with them, right? So on also like, you know, there are other people who have done electrical or uh, mechanical engineering or, or some, some few have done like, you know, other art, art degrees as well, like, you know, accounting or whatsoever. And they have switched careers as well, right? but they're not uh, progressing on that same level as others are. There might be a few exceptions, but like uh, overall, if you think about it, you need to have a formal degree to, um, uh, to have within computer sciences so that you would be able to go forward and then you know, progress as much as possible in this competitive world. Um, with that in mind, like um, I kind of uh, have this link. This is a very, very useful link. Uh, if you click on it, it would basically take you to a Google search page, uh, which would give you all the best technology companies within US um, and based off like, you know, what is their average cost? 
uh, what is their graduation rate, what is their acceptance rate. This is very, very important, right? Um, like you have to work your uh, work hard um, on, on, on getting your stat, uh, SAT uh, scores up and, uh, and also not just, not just the scores, but also like, you know, how you are different from others to get into these colleges. Because like once you get into these colleges, uh, you're, I'm pretty sure like, you know, you come out as, as best of the best and would be hired by best of the best, right? Uh, that is something that you keep, need to keep in mind. Um, the more effort that you're going to put in at this point in time, the more fruitful it will be, inshallah, in the next coming up, uh, coming years. Um, so with that in mind, like, um, do go over this link. You, you can basically do like, you know, from an average cost perspective, um, what I can do from, if I'm looking only, you know, if I'm working under budget, then what are the areas, uh, what are the colleges that are offering courses within that particular, uh, range? Um, if you, if you are looking for something that, you know, I just want to stay in Texas and what are my options, or if I want to go in other States, or if I want to go into California, uh, what are my options, then that would actually give you more insight into each and everything. And within that, like, you know, it gives you an overview. Uh, it would give you the ranking of that, uh, particular school, as well as like the admission requirements, as well as the cost, living costs and all that kind of stuff. And then in terms of what programs do they offer, right? And then what are the outcomes? What are, how many students are there? So things like that, it would actually help you out in deciding what school that you need to apply for and then what would be the competitive rate to start working with. Okay. Um, so, yeah, perfect. Okay, uh, next thing, like uh, now, the focus should be now, for example, like, you know, uh, what should I do before high school, right? If you are in middle school um, right now, and if you are in a different profession, for example, right, and you want to switch, then what are the things that I can actually work on? What are the, what are the skill set that I need to understand and then acquire in order to be, in order to be a successful IT uh, career oriented guy, right? Or IT professional. So like with that in mind, like uh, uh, there are four things that are pretty, pretty important. Uh, one thing is like, uh, you know, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Those are the four fundamental uh, things that you need to be very, very, very focused on, right? Um, the strong STEM programs are out there nowadays. Like, you know, th there's so many different programs uh, that you can enroll yourself into. It's not like, you know, you just, you, you don't have the exposure now in this age of the internet, you have exposure to everything, right? So with that in mind, I would say like, you know, there are a lot of STEM courses um, that are out there. I'll pull them up and then um, you can go through those. Um, if you are a parent uh, working with your child, so help them to take these classes uh, and then they'll get to know if they're the right fit of fit for that part or not, right? And these would basically help them to um, uh, three aspects. Critical thinking, it would help them to understand what critical thinking is, how they can basically do that part, uh, and then it would progress there. Uh, and then also in terms of it would actually elevate their thinking process as well, right? So that is very, very critical when it comes to all these STEM courses. Of course, like mathematics is also important, understanding the concepts, um, understanding like uh, at an early age, if you're understanding uh, concepts of multiplication or division or plus or minus, these are just, just basic things that you learn, but on top of it, you build that, um, build that circle um, to basically address all those calculus based questions as well. So what I always think about like, you know, why people, uh, why is it necessary for a software engineer or a programmer or anyone within the IT industry to understand all these concepts, right? That is very important uh, to understand. So that if, if you understand that in the right way, then you can basically do each and everything um, or handle or any hurdle that comes your way in a very systematic way, as well as like, you know, from a, from a critical thinking perspective, right? You, your thought process is gonna be very, very different from all the other people that are out there who are not uh, focused or not doing these kind of courses, right? 
so to to elevate yourself i would really recommend that you should start uh, enrolling yourself or your kids into this uh, these stem programs and then also at the same time there are a lot of uh, self learning programming portals as well um they, these are various different uh, these are various different websites uh, that are out there where you can learn about programming you can learn about uh, any profession like you know it uh, cloud based transformations or networking courses or maybe uh, if you want to become a help desk technician like there's so many different courses out there you would be able to go through that and then of course like uh, our beloved uh, epic masjid is also hosting a lot of uh, in instructor based uh, classes so we encourage you to enroll yourself into those and then get to know and understand the day and day to day uh, life of uh, of these professionals as well as understand what what are the requirements how, what are the things that would make you successful within that profession inshallah and then also like uh, there are a few uh, if you're fond of reading there are a few websites that uh, offer uh, free as well as paid uh, books that you can basically go on and then look into that as well um so from a high school perspective now these are the years that are very 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 critical for anyone right um mostly like what i say is like you know if you are targeting for a score uh then target high because you'll always get whatever you're targeting like for example if i'm targeting like uh, 1500 i would get about like 40 1460 or 1450 something of that sort right so always target for high um, because like if you are to get into good schools and then get into uh, these big giant companies uh, and if you want to make money out of it, as well as like understand the, the best of the best solutions out there, then you would need to go into good universities, right? Um, you would need to understand those concepts and to do that, uh, you would need a pretty good SAT score as well as a GPA throughout. So what I've seen um, for good good um to get into a good college is to prepare prepare and prepare uh that are the three uh three p's that i say in each and every conversation that i have with um with any of the person that i uh, meet with right um and then based off of uh, the score that on an average in getting into a best of the best uh college you would be um you would be considered if you have at least 1500 set score if you have less than 1500 forget about those good universities right that is an average um, that you would need to have in order to compete with other people so think about those kind of things think about like how i can achieve that um, talk to when you get into this like uh, do do counseling on that part uh, there are a lot of counselors who work with you on uh, improving your set scores as well right so those are the important aspects where you need to uh, push yourself as well as seek help. That is very, very critical, right? So always, always and always uh, think about that part. And um, as, as this industry is ever-changing profession, like, you know, each and every profession within IT is going to be changing dramatically, right? So like um, uh, what, what, what this shifting in nature is like, you know, with, it would give you different entry points into this uh, IT profession as well. And uh, there's no single way of achieving it. So first thing first is to be focused on uh, your studies, focus on what, what uh, your personality type is. And then of course, like uh, uh, based out of that, like there's so many different things that you have to do in parallel. Uh, like, you know, like you're taking your STEM courses, taking your programming courses, if you're going to be going into programming or uh, whatever the IT profession that you think that you want to uh, excel in, then start exploring about it, start, start getting into those groups, join groups. There are so many meetup groups at this point in time. Uh, there's an app called Meetup. Of course, like, uh, you know, you, you can get yourself enrolled into all those uh, professional networks and that will actually give you insight into a lot of things. Uh, go on to LinkedIn, uh, create your own profile, uh, join groups on that part. Uh, that will actually give you more, uh, more reach out to the network, and that would actually give you more insight into how you can achieve your goals in a much more organized manner, right? 
So uh, with that in mind, like um, I think I have a few final tips and thoughts um, to cover and then I will open um, questions um, and then we'll go from there. So, um, you know, final tips is like, you know, uh, based off uh, what we've just discussed, don't, don't lose sight of who you are. That is the number one thing, right? Um, don't see that, you know, because of others, you want to fit in into something that you are not fond of or you don't love. Do whatever you're passionate about. Do whatever that you would be proud of, right? Um, so things are of that nature you need to identify and then kind of align professions accordingly. It can be an IT profession or it can be any other profession. No profession is, um, is above anything or uh, below anything. I would say the passion is where it would actually take you to the next level, right? So I always wanted to be a, um, a software engineer. So I was curious about like all these softwares, how they're made, how they're developed, why do we develop those? What kind of things can I do? How can I bring um, change to the environment that I'm in, right? Those are the factors that I was I used to think about. And uh, Alhamdulillah, fortunately, like, you know, I was blessed by uh, having few people who kind of encouraged me as well as guided me throughout the process, right? So uh, I'm blessed on that part. And that is the thing that you guys have to develop as well. Start talking about uh, what you guys think about, what is the feedback, join groups, uh, talk about that aspect. That is very, very important to have a strong support group um, inside and outside the IT profession, whatever profession that you guys have. And uh, also like, you know, from a, uh, from, a uh, from a speaking perspective, I would say that is a very critical, critical, critical uh, skill set that you need to develop. All the soft skills, um, concentrate on that as much as you can. Um, uh, also like, you know, on your hard skills. So join Toastmaster. Um, it is nowadays, it's all online. You can even go um, at the venue or you can join Toastmasters online as well. I would definitely recommend that part. And then also, you know, like uh, try to make time for prayers in Quran because uh, definitely it, it, it really gives you strength uh, and is a great stress reliever, right? And um, uh, volunteer within the community, learn about empathy and emotional maturity. That would actually help you a lot into understanding other people's uh, other people problem, put yourself into other uh, other person's shoe and then try to look from their perspective. That would actually, you know, enlighten you with so many different uh, experiences and so many different learnings, right? And of course, it's not easy, uh, like any professional program, it's going to be tough, uh, no doubt about it. But like, you know, the more effort that you're gonna put in, inshallah, you'll succeed for sure. So with that in mind, like uh, Brother Kashif, um, we'll, we can move on to uh, the Q&A section. So like um, if, uh, if you have questions. Um, thank you, Ghazanfar. This was very um, insightful, very enlightening. Uh, I'm waiting for questions to come in. Uh, in the meantime, if, if I may add a couple of things, um, since I'm kind of in the similar domain. Um, so based on my experience working with students over the last six, seven years, and based on my uh, degree in computer science as well, um, one thing that I've seen over and over again is um, some people have a fear of programming and, and they think that by reading a book or by um, attending a lecture, they're going to learn how to program. In my humble opinion, if you want to learn how to program, you have to sit on the computer, start coding. That's how you learn. There's no, no other way of learning how to program. Absolutely. So that's number one. Number two, um, everything that uh, Brother Ghazan uh, brother first shared uh, there is an entrepreneurial side to IT as well. Um, and that's where you can make a lot of money. Um, so I know at this age, people are people look at the average salaries that you can make in a profession and say, well, doctors make 200K or 250K. Why should I go into this? Or why should I um, not become a doctor? Um, you, you, uh, if, if you are thinking that way, then understand that um, by getting into this profession in software engineering or, or computer science, 
you basically can develop something um, and then market it uh, yourself and then start making way more than what a doctor makes. Absolutely. Lastly, uh, I would like to add that when I work with students, I mean, I used to uh, run the MS Business Analytics program at UT Dallas. Now I'm running the, the two programs that I mentioned earlier at UNT. When I work with a lot of uh, parents, um, there's a perception that a, a UTD degree or a UNT degree is pretty much the same as a degree that you would get from Berkeley or uh, from other places. Uh, this is not a correct perception. So the biggest thing that you get by sending your kids to a top university is the networking aspect. Uh, when everybody who is coming to a top university is is going to work for Google or Microsoft or IBM, the chances are uh, that if you attend a top university, you also would end up going to a big company and that gives you a really big boost. And then from the entrepreneur side of things, uh, that's where the, the startups uh, form. I mean, when you are at UC Berkeley or any such top institution, uh, that's where you meet the right people. That's where you build your networks to, to get into the entrepreneur side of things. So anyways, I wanted to share these two or three things uh, before we move on to the, the Q&A. Um, um, so first question that I have uh, is, uh, is the AI fall into the data scientist domain? Can you elaborate a little bit on the AI profession? Uh, good question. Um, so what I would say is like, uh, it's a different tangent. Um, like uh, there are uh, a lot of, uh, uh, I would say like, uh, that's a whole different domain uh, than what the data scientist is. Of course, like uh, da within data sciences, uh, there are applications where we basically use a lot of AI based algorithms, uh, but like uh, as in um, AI is basically being developed uh, on its own uh, as a different industry. Right, uh, like uh, that's a different tangent, I would say, than what data data science is. Uh, of course, there are applications where um, within data science, like you know, for example, like just take an example. Um, for example, like if I'm developing a uh, analytical model where I'm uh, where I'm analyzing a lot of data in terms of uh, what the current situation is and how is that going to impact uh, retailers, how is that going to impact the people. How is that gonna impact, or what changes would, um, what impact would a stimulus check bring in? Then I would have to collect the data. That data is gonna be collected and analyzed. How are we gonna analyze that? It's all part of data sciences, right? Now, the portion where I have a algorithm that would actually predict that, okay, based on these monetary situations that I have right now, uh, in future, what am I going to be capable of or what would be the outcome of that? That is an algorithm that is basically from a artificial intelligence perspective. So that is a whole different domain than what the data sciences is. That is just my uh, opinion. And then if you see on the Google, um, if you do some research, you would also see like, a, you know, like there are a lot of different, um, uh, different areas within AI uh, that our people are working on. So that's a different, I would say, a career on its own, uh, AI-based career. I hope that answers your question. Thank you, Hatanpur. Just if I uh, can add one little thing. Um, there is an aspect of automation that comes into uh, AI as well. Sometimes people talk about uh, using machine learning algorithms to automate something, but um, a lot of times the lines get blurred so um, mm -hmm. pick up a little bit more on AI versus machine learning. Um, okay, so moving on to the next question. Um, this question is from Ali. Um, for senior folks like myself, what about product ma uh, management? So um, Ali is trying to get into product management. He has a, a follow-up as well, he says, um, how can one transition into product management, uh, especially someone who has worked uh, as a business analyst, uh, project manager, and SAP success factor certified consultant? Right. Good. Uh, that's a that's another good question. So 
Um, I, I'm not aware of the background, like uh, what experience you have, Ali. But like uh, getting into pro product management on its own is like uh, requires a lot of skills on its own, right? Uh, so like uh, uh, what I would say is like uh, uh, critical thinking is uh, at least the number top uh, thing, and then the number two, um, if you are if you have uh, you know like uh, a lot of uh, soft skills, that is also important. So think of it from a perspective of what what role or what what is the what is the role of a product manager, right? So as I was discussing in my previous deck, uh, uh, like I had a slide where it had a business analyst, right? So business analyst is a person who basically um, is a liaison between the business users as well as like uh, the um, the IT people, right? Like or the or the technology developing people. So what it does is like uh, whenever whenever a product owner so for example, like a business analyst would take requirements, they would understand the challenges, they would come up with a business solution that how we can solve that, and then work with the IT, IT team to say, okay, you know, these are uh, the things that we need to solve, and from a technology perspective, how we can solve that, right? Now, progressing from that to a uh, product manager or product management position is something uh, that most of the business analysts have seen they've done, right? Because they are, uh, they know how to under, they know to understand the skill set. There are two aspects of that part. Number one, um, like uh, first thing first, from a product management perspective, you need to understand if you're developing a product, what is that product going to solve, right? What is the vision of the product? what how is that gonna product help others what market market are you basically uh, targeting for right what feature sets are gonna that uh, is that uh, product gonna deliver what is your competitive analysis like you need to be very very strong on those tangents right um, if you're thinking about product development or product management side then you also need to look into competitive analysis right so if you have done that portion of the mix and you are pretty good at it then yes it would be it would be uh, a good choice to move into, and it is a very very challenging portion of the mix because nowadays um, the product uh, the product manager is not just uh, a person who understands business, but they also understand technology and how we can bring disruption. Right, that is the number one thing. So if you can think outside the box, then of course product management is uh, a very good profession to go into. And I uh, and I've seen people who have like uh, you know developed uh, so many different concepts, uh, but it all comes boils down to you know like uh, giving um, giving insight or uh, having insight into what the issues are, uh, how we can solve them, and then things like that. Those are very very critical things for a product manager. Hope that answers your question. Thank you, Sanfer. Uh, moving on to the next question. Um, I passed the comp TIA S. I'm not sure what exactly this is, but I passed a comp TIA uh, exam uh, and also the CAP exams. Um, looking for an entry position or entry level position. Comp TIA Security Plus and the CAP exam. Okay, so comp TIA Security Plus and the CAP exam. Uh, looking for an entry level position. You're looking for a position, or uh, you want to get direction on how to get into that? I'm looking for a position, if any help. Okay. Yeah. So uh, what I would say is like uh, there are there are a few things that you can start um, look into. Like uh, there are so many different recruiting companies. Um, start by looking into that, enrolling yourself into that. And then of course, like um, there are so many different uh, websites that are available that would actually filter out results in terms of whatever your requirements are or whatever your skill set is, and then match those skill sets to the job that, that you have. So try to basically get on to uh, get onto those websites, uh, especially like on LinkedIn, start to develop a network. That is what I would say to, um, you know, look for 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 a job in that aspect. I I did. Okay. I have an account on LinkedIn. I'm sorry, sorry I didn't get the last. Yeah. So yeah. so he has an account on LinkedIn, but 
just having an account is not enough. What, what I would okay. suggest is start reaching out to recruiters on LinkedIn. So mm -hmm. in LinkedIn, there is a search option where you can search for specific job titles. You can also search for names. So search for recruiter uh, as a job title. It will give you hundreds of listings. Start adding some of those people to your network. And then once you are added to the network, you will type up an email and you will start blasting that email to as many people as you can uh, and say, these are my skills. This is my resume. I'm currently in the job market. Can you please suggest if, if there's a position that fits my, uh, my profile? Uh, so it's, in my opinion, um, something like this is a number game. So if you send out 100 emails, you'll probably get five people to respond. And out of those five people, you might be able to get one interview or two interviews. So play the number game. Uh, you will, uh, inshallah, have something in, in next month or so. Inshallah, inshallah. Thank you very much. No and problem. also just to add to that, like uh, what I would say is also prep for those interviews as well. Like, you know, if you, if you get, uh, so what I've seen is like uh, the positions are there, but like uh, the capable people are not available or if they are even capable, they're not able to present or sell themselves. So that is a very, very, very critical thing that you need to be focused on. I think uh, you need to prep up for the interview interview sessions. And uh, that is something that uh, there are a lot of people uh, on LinkedIn and also outside LinkedIn that can actually help you out with that part. Uh, start reaching out to those networks. There are also meetup groups um, like um, uh, install the app called Meetup. And then w within the profession that you are working, uh, search for that and then start going into or attending those uh, sessions as well. Like there are now virtual sessions so you can do it through home. So I would suggest to start doing on that part because like the network, the more networking that you do, the more possibility of landing a job there is for you. Thank you very much. Do you mind if I look for you on LinkedIn, for both of you on LinkedIn and add you? Uh, sure, by all means. Sure. Inshallah. Inshallah. Thank you very much. Thank You're you. Welcome. Okay, so the next question is from Brother Walid. Um, I'm not very clear about what is he asking. He just typed C++ specialist or a Java specialist. Now, is it, uh, Walid, if you can unmute and uh, clarify, are you asking for which one of these should you pursue? Okay, not sure. Uh, any any thoughts for for on C++ specialist or Java specialist? Yeah, well, given the trend that I've seen, like um, um, I would I would definitely recommend to go towards Java uh, because like uh, the object oriented architectures or the concepts are going to be built in both the languages. Like. Uh, you should not be dependent on a language, right? Um, you should basically clear your uh, concepts. That is the number one thing. So I think uh, you can start with Java uh, and then because like, that would actually give you um, a, a, a foundation to work on your technologies, right? Uh, to start with, like you can learn Java, you can, you know, I don't know if you, if you have worked on uh, Spring or Hibernate or whatsoever, uh, work on those aspects that would actually give you from a server side perspective like you know what what are the things that are being worked upon and then specialize into um different different technologies because the concepts are the same it's just the syntax that is going to be different uh there are going to be few variations where it's going to be stateless or stateful or whatsoever is the case right so those are the kind of aspects that you can cover further down the road but at least to start with i think uh, there is a lot of uh a lot of data that is available uh, from, from uh, data as well as like content available online to start with. And uh, Java, I think is something that you should start with. So moving on, um, there is a question. Uh, if I want to get into IT field, which certification should I get? That's a very broad uh, question. So uh like uh, there are about like 2500 plus uh, certifications uh, uh within within it profession so like if you are looking towards uh, if you're looking towards getting into cloud transformation or cloud enablement 
then look into um, certifications from AWS and Azure. Um, like uh, there are certain, uh, I don't know, like, you know, if you want to be a developer or if you want to go towards the, the networking side or if you want to build up the infrastructure, um, I'm not so sure where your interest is, but like uh, from that perspective, like uh, you know, from a cloud-based perspective, there are certain uh, free uh, certifications out there, like Microsoft is actually doing a lot of uh, uh, a lot of investment into it uh, by um, by promoting their content, by promoting their trainings. So, like you can start with that uh, from an Azure Microsoft Azure perspective. Uh, those certifications are there and free, so you can look into that. And also, there are certifications uh, within AWS side, like Amazon. Uh, site where you would be able to look into uh, different um, certifications like uh, uh, associate architect or architect level or developer level, or basically just be a practitioner, right? So just to get a high level understanding, the practitioner, uh, practitioner certifications are available. You can look into that. And then to advance yourself, if you think that you know, you're good at that and then you wanna pursue towards that career, then go to the associate as well as then to professional. Uh, that is the way to move forward. And then from a uh, perspective of uh, doing a programming-based uh, certifications, uh, there are different platforms where um, a lot of companies are actually moving into. So nowadays, I, what I've seen is like, you know, uh, e-commerce is pretty high at this point in time. So the platform that are associated to e-commerce uh, or CRM based uh, platforms, those are something that I would, I would uh, have you focus on. So either like from a CRM perspective, you can look into Salesforce, um, you can look into Microsoft Dynamics. Um, those are pretty easy to understand and then uh, easy to get done to start with. And then at this point in time, there is a lot of need uh, for Salesforce uh, developers at this point in time. So that is something that you can look into, but if you're very, very keen and very interested in, uh, in uh, deep dive programming, then I would say to start towards uh, the full stack development and then uh, pursue uh, certifications within that area. All right, thank you, Hazan. For just one thing that I would like to add, um, especially if someone who has no background in IT has never done programming, um, there are some low hanging fruits as well. So. Um, like Epic Masjid has been conducting different classes. I conducted a class on BI uh, and ClickView uh, a few months ago. Uh, it doesn't require any programming. There are tons of jobs out there. You would probably start as a BI developer or uh, a ClickView developer or something. Um, basic SQL skills are needed for that. So look into those as well. Attend uh, classes, but the thing that I, and I'm going to be very uh, candid here, the thing that I've seen with our community is that people take the classes, get in, they, uh, after, after that, they hardly ever do anything. Uh, they would apply for jobs for two weeks, and then they, if, if they don't line up a job, they say, well, it doesn't work. Uh, so that's <clears throat> not how it works in, in IT in general. Uh, you have to be persistent. You have to constantly apply. Uh, even after my master's degree in computer science, it took me about a year to get into my first job. So um, if you are not persistent, you are not going to be able to get a job. Once you are in and you have the, the experience on your resume, then afterwards, everything kind of works smoothly. Uh, yeah. Moving on to the to the next question. Um, so, sorry, Kashif, just to expand, I, I just want to expand on your mm -hmm. uh, thoughts. So, uh, Looking for a job, like a so brother Kashi is absolutely right. Like, you know, the more work that you're going to put in, the more effort that you're going to put in, the better results that you're going to get, right? And then also, it's not like a don't dis get discouraged. Like, you know, if you're not getting calls uh, or if you're not doing that, go. There are so many different websites where you can do uh, freelancing, right? So start by doing that part as well. Look into, look into the uh, websites where you can do freelancing because that would actually give you experience right um you whatever the programming that you're doing start developing solutions on your own it's not like you know somebody would give you something and then you'll start but you can start on your own and then maybe your idea uh, may be a hit right like uh and the entrepreneurial thing that uh, brother kashi was talking about uh think of that aspect as well 
it's not just about job it's about like uh, how you develop your programming skills right and then how you elevate yourself so that is very very uh, critical uh, that you need to think about as well thank you brother kashif thank you radhanpur moving on um uh this question is from sister saba she's saying um, someone who wants to return to it profession after a gap of 6 or 7 years uh, do you suggest a masters degree or uh, should one concentrate on smaller courses to get back into into the uh, it work right uh what well, my two cents on that would be that uh, if you already have a, a degree in computers uh then rather than going into masters uh pursue few uh courses and then brush up your skills and then try to land a job uh or start your own gig right that is something that you should do and then as time progresses when you are back in 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 the industry and you kind of understand the dynamics then enroll into masters and it would be more fruitful for you at that point in time that is just my my uh, two cents but brother kashif like you know you've been more involved uh with the uh, with students at uh, at your university so i i would really much like you to weigh on that yeah i i would absolutely uh, agree with what you said so it, it depends on how much personal discipline somebody has a lot of people feel like that a masters degree is a must to get into Uh, an IT career, uh, or if I don't have a degree from the US, a degree from the US is a must. I don't agree with that. Um, if somebody has a personal discipline to go through courses on uh, on like their own time, absolutely do that. Update your resume. Have a good presence on LinkedIn. Put your work on uh, GitHub or or some other websites where you get the visibility. start writing a few blogs here and there and it's just a matter of time that you can get a job now if for whatever reason because of the the timing constraints or uh, the discipline side of things if someone feels like well i can't do it on my own then look into the masters um, uh, as a possibility yep i agree okay so moving on um uh, brother kaleem has this question i have a masters in electronics engineering and um if i have to start my career in it uh, do you have any suggestions sure so um like i've seen a lot of uh, even in my in my own organization like i have a lot of people who have uh, who have uh, degrees other than computer sciences um not at all an issue uh it's all about like you know what what your passion is like is it just the um what is the drive you need to understand like what is the driving factor that is pushing you towards the it right uh is it just the money or is it something that you know there isn't any other job uh that um that is available within that industry and you want to move on to the one that has more or is it like you know you you have spent numerous years within within this uh, industry that you're working in and you think that you know you are better off or your interests have developed into another um in in into another profession right so those are the driving factors i would say to to think about that make an assessment and absolutely like it, there is no hard pass rule that you cannot switch uh, your competency from you know electronics to uh, to it but on the contrary like what i would say like uh, within electronics like uh, nowadays like uh, there's so many things that are indulged with it especially like uh, you know like from an electronics perspective all these gadgets that are coming out um all these iot devices internet based uh, thing that that's basically coming internet of things uh that's coming out basically that that is really um a mix of both worlds electronics as well as uh, uh, software software engineering or software development so like if you can pursue something on that tangent that would actually help you to um to elevate your career because like you would be using uh, both your both your skill set you'd be using your uh, electronic background as well as you can develop something out on the on the software side as well so think of that perspective uh, see what areas that you can look into uh, where you can combine both the uh, both the um i would say skill set thank you bro 
Okay, um, moving on to the next question, um, kind of going to summarize this. So I have a, a background in engineering and computer science. Um, I have two years of gap ever since I moved to the US. Uh, recently completed my Salesforce admin certification. Um, can you please suggest how to go for an entry level position? How, how to go for what? I'm sorry. Uh, for an entry level position. Uh, into Salesforce or into IT industry? Uh, in Salesforce, uh, brother, actually, I have done my uh, engineering in computer science, but I have a few years of uh, career gap since I moved to United States. Okay. Uh, now I want to get back to workforce. So I found uh, Salesforce quite interesting. So mm -hmm. I started learning about Salesforce since July. And recently in November, like last month, I cleared my Salesforce uh, admin cert. So my question is like, you know, I really want to uh, get into like, you know, uh, get the real time experience. So I was looking for some kind of nonprofit uh, organizations or uh, volunteer positions wherein, you know, I can get some real time experience because if I don't have any experience, like, you know, anywhere for entry level position also, they're asking for uh, one or two years of uh, uh, experience. So, sure. so for uh, that, like, uh, you know, what do you suggest for me? Uh, great. Like, uh, I, I think you've already, uh, already going in the right direction. Like uh, you already have an understanding of like, you know, I shouldn't just start making money. It's all about like learning. Right. So yes. I think you're already on the right track. Uh, with that in mind, like, uh, my company also has a lot of, uh, uh, Salesforce, like a big, uh, Salesforce competency. Okay. Uh, so what I can do is like, uh, you know, like through brother Kashif and Mohsen, uh, you can uh, you can basically share your uh, resume with them, and then sure. I'll basically forward it over to my competency as well to see like you know if we can um, if we can work with you in any capacity. Yeah, sure, sure, brother. Please uh, do let me know your uh, email ID. I mean, like you can share me your email ID so that I can forward my resume. Sure. Um, uh, you can basically, uh, brother Kashif. I don't know, like what would be the right. Um, uh, medium for that part uh, but like um, whatever you suggest we can um i think if you if you can send your resume to the uh, ethic career counseling uh, email okay we can forward it to brother Kazan. okay yeah, and please do mention like uh, the uh, the conversation that we had so so that like it kind of okay sure helps. Yeah. and good luck with your uh, search thank you Okay, so moving on. Um, how does having a tech-related blog website impact your chances of getting a job? Also, uh, can you please talk a little about um, Salesforce? I'm sorry, can you repeat the question, please? Yeah, um, how does having a tech-related blog or website impact your chances of getting a job? Uh, also, can you please uh, talk a little about Salesforce? Absolutely. So like, uh, uh, also brother Kasha mentioned that, uh, blog part, um, it matters. It really helps you a lot, a lot to make yourself, uh, distinct from others. Right. Um, and then you would basically stand, um, from the others as well, because whenever you are on LinkedIn, um, if you are adding your comments to a specific thing, people read that and then kind of follow or what you are doing as well, right? So for example, like, um, let me just give an example. Um, whenever I'm hiring uh, people, I always look into like, you know, what, what is their passion about, right? What are they passionate about? There might be, um, if they're writing blogs, if they are basically uh, making comments on technologies or are they contributing towards uh, Stack Overflow? Do they have a Stack Overflow account or not, right? Um, think like that, like, you know, those kind of things definitely help you out to, uh, make yourself, uh, distinguish from others, right? That's one thing. Portfolio is also another thing from your perspective, like, you know, from your, and like, you know, if you share like what technologies have you worked on, what are the challenges that you faced, uh, during the projects and then how you resolve those, those things are definitely, definitely going to work. Because like, if you're having those problems, I'm pretty sure like, you know, hundreds and thousands and millions of people uh, other than you are going to be having the same problem. 
and what they turn to is either Google or Stack Overflow. So like uh, try to create uh, your own account over there, um, uh, post as much as you can, whatever issues that you have faced, uh, put them into some writing, put some uh, you know context to it, and then upload that. And I'm pretty sure that you're gonna start uh, uh, having followings on that portion of the mix as well. And also it's not just one uh, on that, it's also a monetary thing. Like, you know, if you write blogs and all that kind of stuff, then you also are invited into a lot of uh, technology conferences um, and you can be a, a speaker as well. So those are the kind of things that you should be focused on, try to network more and more, uh, try to have free webinars or uh, add like, you know, hey, I understand this technology, I'm willing to teach anyone who's willing to um, uh, who's willing to learn. So those are the kind of things like, you know, uh, would help you out a lot uh, to get recognized and uh, accreditations is another thing that you will get on that part. And just one, one point that I would like to add, a lot of people think that for writing blogs, you have to have expert level uh, yeah. knowledge. Uh, I, would, yeah. I would say that you actually don't need expert level knowledge. For example, let's say you're learning Python. You picked up a book and you started reading the book and then you started doing the hands-on. You start a blog for people who are starting Python and then anything that you learn that day, a small program, you share it with some tips uh, so that anybody else can go through it. That way, while you are learning Python, you are helping others to learn Python as well. Yep. Those things can get visible. Uh, and with social media, it can be shared with others. All you need is, is some visibility some presence online that somebody can look at um, and you can put the link of your blog on, absolutely put the link of your blog on your resume so that someone can look at it uh, right. in terms of what you have been doing. Right, and then also one, one more thing to add is like if you're a programmer, uh, then you should basically have uh, your, like, uh, you know, push your code or make that available on GitHub as well for others. Uh, so that would actually give you uh, more uh, traction towards like, you know, how people would look at what you're doing and oh, how much you are basically contributing towards the cause. So that's also another thing that you can do. Okay, so uh, moving on to the next one. Um, uh, basically, the question is, uh, I have an associate degree. Uh, should I rather get a bachelor's degree or focus on certifications? Uh, because certifications are going to be cheaper than getting a, um, a bachelor's degree. Right. Um, I think it's a it's a uh, good question. Um, so I'm gonna revert back to the uh, original thing. Like getting a degree is important, but like uh, as you already have an associate degree, uh, what I would say is to at least uh, get into a few courses and then see like, you know, where, what level are you at? If you are already an experienced person who has worked uh, in the industry, then I think um, a co going toward the courses is, is a much better route at this point in time. Uh, but like, of course, like, uh, you know, it really helps to get a degree. Um, but like, uh, if you already have an associate degree, then that would actually open up a few of the doors for you. Uh, but like still like, you know, if you see like a lot of uh, big companies, uh, they still require you to have at least a bachelor's degree, right? So like um, that would actually limit your um, uh, chances. But I think, uh, you know, that as, as we are progressing towards this industry and, and the pace that we are working at, I think um, it, it for the immediate time, it is better to enroll yourself and get few courses done and then uh, go from there. Brother Kashif uh, um, would appreciate your aspect as well on, the, on this note. No, I, I think that's absolutely uh, right. Um, I only get a degree if you feel like you can't do it on your own. Um, many employers are okay with the, the skills that you bring on, bring on the table, whether you have a degree or not. So uh, if, you feel like you can do it on your own. You don't need the structure of a degree where you go through semester over semester and you learn certain skills. Absolutely go for certifications, do the hands-on. Um, the hands-on is critical. A lot of times when you just pass a certification and you haven't done any hands-on, especially in the cloud domain, um, anybody can tell whether you know this stuff or not within five minutes in, in the interview. 
So doing the hands-on will give you the confidence Then build on it. Um, if, if you feel like you can get in, don't worry about a degree, just, just focus on, on your learning. Um, there are quite a few other questions. So moving on quickly, there are some questions which are similar. For example, there's the question, how do I get into an IT field with certifications? Should I get, this has been covered before, so I'm not gonna go there again. Uh, there's a question on um, what is the difference between um, pro, um, a programmer profile and a software engineer profile? That's a good question. So I kind of covered it uh, a little bit on on my uh, on my slide deck, uh, but like uh, from a from a programming perspective, anyone can do programming. Like it's just uh, writing a functional uh, code, right? So if you know the syntax, if you know like uh, if have anyone giving you the logic, then you can basically write that logic within a within a syntax, right? And then be done with it. So there are two aspects to it. Um, one is the validate, the other one is the verify, right? Um, let me explain how, how, how I differentiate between the two. So the validate part is basically the programmer, right? So what they do is like um, uh, they, would, they are given few certain requirements. Based on those requirements, they write a few lines of code or like tons of lines of code, and then they uh, develop a working software, right? That's it. Now, the difference between the software engineer and the programmer is that uh, software engineers verify uh, whatever they have built is consistent to what the needs are, right? So that is the major difference. So software engineers would basically put in their uh, uh, thinking cap on and then think about the problem itself. Like what is the actual problem? How can I solve the problem? How can I, uh, how can I make it more efficient how can I uh, create a more Im immersive experience for the customer or whatever I'm doing? How would I be able to utilize a better technology to get this work done, right? On the flip side, programmer would think about, okay, you know what? I wanna get this thing done. Uh, I know this language, let's just get this thing done in this language, right? It, it, the th thought process or the mindset is different than uh, what it is from a software engineer versus a programmer. And that is the reason why many companies basically prefer software engineers over programmers, because uh, if I'm if I'm if I'm a company that would actually be working on a front-facing uh, technology or front-facing website, uh, I would always hire a software engineer because he would think about uh, what the customer persona is, what is the problem, what is the vision, what are the objectives and goals of that particular initiative, and then on basically on terms of that part, they would basically architect the whole ecosystem, right? That is where I would basically select a software engineer versus a programmer. Now, if I'm selecting, if I wanna do a repetitive work, uh, I would definitely go in for a programmer. I would say, okay, you know what? This is a, uh, this is, uh, this is a uh, PCB board, I need to program it. Uh, I need a programmer that would basically do the same thing again and again for that, uh, for that part. And they would do the thing. And that's just my thought process, my two cents uh, toward that part. But like uh, the main differentiator, I would say is basically how uh, they, they bring in their engineering principles as well as concepts into the play. That is very important where uh, software engineers are distinguished uh, from programmers. Thank you, Rosenfer. That was very clear. Um, okay, so the next question is, um, are there any IT certificate courses to advance in accounting field? I work with Nets, NetSuite and want to become a trainee or a developer. Yep. Uh, I'm not well versed in NetSuite uh, that much, but like I do know a, a lot of ERP systems, um, SAP, HANA, as well as like uh, Dynamics. Uh, that's my persona that I work in. So from a finance and operations perspective, uh, of course, that is a pretty massive uh, induction that we've been doing. Like uh, we have, like I just recently, like, uh, you know, like uh, within my own organization, uh, we hired about like uh, 11 people uh, who have uh, degrees in accounting, right? Uh, and accrual and all that kind of stuff. And then now we're basically teaching them from a technology perspective to make them functional consultants 
so that we can implement uh, we can implement best practices from an accounting perspective and uh, put them into the system as well. And then the system is Microsoft Dynamics um, as well as SAP. Uh, they have their own finance and operations modules. Um, understanding those modules would actually help that you know how accounts are set up, how the invoices are created, how those are reconciled. All those kind of stuff is basically within that persona. And then uh, the best career I would say for that particular uh, person who has who has a background in accounting uh, would be to be a functional consultant, um, where they would have the understanding of the best principles or whatsoever is the accounting processes of an organization. Understand that, and how can that be done through a system, or how how can we capture all those transactions within the system? Uh, using ERP systems like uh, like Dynamics or uh, SAP. Okay, um, thank you, Azanfer. Moving on to the next one, um, can you touch upon the ethical hacking um, slash forensic inv investigator within IT, and what can um, what can one do with these certifications? Say. Uh, MS in cybersecurity or something. Right. Yeah, good question. Um, so a lot of uh, companies are now focused on um, on on these kind of cybersecurity and uh, ethical hacking um, is, of course, like a, a full-fledged profession. Um, all the banks, all the big organizations, all the, all the major organizations who are dealing with uh, payment gateways or uh, have something to do with transaction, online transactions, uh, they are heavily invested into into it, and uh, there are departments, uh, not just few positions, but departments that actually carry out these uh, uh, these uh, like you know attacks uh, in house and all that kind of ethical attacks, right? To investigate uh, as well as uh, solidify the infrastructure that they have. So it it can be there are numerous different um, certifications that you can do uh, within that persona. And uh, like um, I would say to start looking into at least from a, a CISA perspective, look into that. Um, those are like certified uh, certified auditors uh, from a security perspective, look into that persona. And then there are so many different tangents or so many different uh, certifications that you can look into. But if you're keeping yourself from a programming perspective, then I would say that uh, from a programming perspective, you should start auditing the code base, as well as like a look into some uh, some kind of uh, leakages. And then also uh, there are so many different hackathons that are done. Um, like uh, most of the companies basically offer hackathons uh, where they say, okay, you know, this is the piece of application that we have. Uh, why don't you basically uh, compete in the competition and try to penetrate our infrastructure or our application. And in that way you can basically uh, go into those competitions as well. So just now, like, um, uh, just to let you know, like uh, Tesla is one of them. Uh, they have this every year. Um, recently, like uh, they were basically doing a um, hackathon program where they said like, you know, anyone who would basically be able to hack into our, um, into our car uh, entertainment system, we would be, we would, the prize money was Tesla on its own. So um, three people actually won uh, Tesla's because like they were able to penetrate uh, into their system and then they showed them and this is how we did it. This, these are the vulnerabilities. They identified the vulnerabilities and then they basically gave the fixes for those as well. So very, very interesting uh, feel, very interesting as well. And then it is on, uh, it is uh, increasing day by day. Okay, so we are already over one o'clock. Maybe I'll take a couple of last questions. Uh, there is one question. Um, which talks about what is the differences between a program manager versus a project manager job? Good question. So uh, it depends, it varies organization to organization, but like uh, on a high level, like uh, uh, the project manager is responsible for the outcomes of the project, right? Uh, it can be a small project. Uh, it can be uh, impacting only a small portion of the a small portion of the application, right? Or just one application. Uh, on the other hand, like from a program uh, program management perspective, 
we need to understand that as a whole so collectively there might be multiple projects uh, that would basically uh, be under one program and then within that like uh, those uh, those individual projects might have multiple project managers but for that one program uh, so for example like let me just give you an example uh, a company would basically say okay i want to implement my uh, digital transformation within the whole organization right now they might have multiple um, they might have multiple programs or multiple applications that they're working in so one of our clients may have like uh, have like 10 applications and those 10 applications need uh, updates now there might be 10 project managers working on individual project uh, individual applications and getting the work done within those applications and then collectively there would be a program manager who would be overseeing the objectives are being met and then whatever we are achieving is aligned to the vision right a vision of that program so there that is basically the difference where a program manager would basically uh, work on a program level and then see the overarching uh, like all the different projects and all the tangents within that and then have uh, meetings or um, collaboration between project project managers right and then even above uh, the program management there is portfolio management where there are different lines of business within each uh, organization so for example like uh, let's just take an example of chase bank Chase Bank has a different vertical of uh, credit lines, credit cards, uh, bank accounts. Uh, they would have auto loans, right? All those are different verticals, right? So that those are different. Uh, those are different portfolios that Chase has. And then within Chase, uh, within those, you would have so for example, like multiple programs that are there. So for example, like uh, you would have a uh, credit card. Uh, application you would have a um, you would have a banking uh, application you would have a portfolio management application right you would have a stock exchange application so all those are basically different programs and within those programs to support those programs you would have multiple projects right so that is basically the whole uh, division of that part but what I would suggest is to look into scale agile um, scale agile methodologies. Uh, that would actually give you an insight into how how the portfolio basically management works, how program management works, and how project management works. Okay, thank you so much, Kazanfer. Uh, we are already seven minutes over, so I'm not gonna uh, take any more questions. Uh, one common pattern that I I'm seeing in all of these questions is um, either people have gaps in their um, work experience or somebody is trying to break into the IT field. Uh, so what I would do is I'm going to work with the, uh, the Epic Career Counseling team. Uh, maybe we can uh, have a session just on that discussion uh, because there seems to be a lot of confusion. Uh, there seems to be a lot of courses that are offered by the uh, Epic Masjid, but apparently, um, the trend is pretty similar that people take the courses and then they don't know what exactly they, they need to do. So I'm going to follow up on that. With that said, uh, Brother Ghazanfar, thank you so much for all the uh, useful information. Um, unless you have any other last thoughts, we can end the session. No, uh, thank you for the opportunity and uh, thank you all for joining in today. Uh, just to, just as I said earlier, like, you know, this is just first of the many sessions uh, that we will be conducting, inshallah. Um, as we progress, like we are going to be more focused on uh, each area and then uh, accordingly, like, of course, like Epic Madrid uh, and all the volunteers are actually working to uh, devise programs that would actually be helpful. And then uh, that's also another good call out where we can basically lay down a few of the pathways for people to understand what those actually are. Um, within the deck, like I've shared a couple of uh, links that would actually tell you uh, how to progress on any given profession, right? So that would actually give you the foundation, uh, the mid-level, what are the things that you need to do, as well as on the advanced side, like, you know, what, what are the things that would make you different from others? So try to go on to those, uh, do some research on those links 
and then with the win that like yeah definitely will touch base uh, probably uh, in the next quarter or so. All right, thank you so much. Um, we will end the call here. Thank you everyone for attending. So thank you everyone. Uh, good luck and take care. Assalamualaikum.